There is order both within the church, which is an extension of family. And the reason why there is a order of leadership in the house and in the church is because there's, there's a structure and there's a hierarchy within God's kingdom. And so when we talk about leadership, uh, I believe that the male, uh, part of the role of God creating males and men was leadership. When you look at Genesis 1, he created man to help govern over all of his creation. And then when he saw man, uh, that there was a deficit in man's life in his ability to live and to lead well, what did he do? He created a helper. And he created the helper that would not compete with him, but would complement him. And the two become one because there are things that I have that Jane doesn't have, and there are things that Jane brings to the table that I don't have, but together we're, we're a team. You see that Adam and Eve, and you see that that's the whole point of marriage, and that's the point of gender, uh, gender sex roles. Uh, we are different. I know our culture wants to blur lines and say, oh no, we're not different. The reality is we are different. We are not the same, and that's not one being better than the other. It's, it's the men and women are distinct and different. I think it's insanity that we live in a culture where you ask a potential Supreme Court justice to define what a woman is, and yet because of the political pressure, not because she's not wise and smart enough, she's a brilliant woman, but because of the political and the cultural pressure, she refuses to answer the question. We live in a day and age where nobody wants to say anything is unique, anything is different, and anything is specific. But God's word says all kinds of things about that. And there is a distinction between men and women. And even in the family, the Bible is very, very clear that it says that just as Christ is the head of the church, this is Ephesians 5, the husband is the head of the wife. So the head of the household is the husband. It's the man. If there is not a husband in the household, and like I for first six years of my life grew up with just a single mom, my mom was the head of the household because she was a single mother. And so if you're a single mother, then God bless you. Jesus will help fill in the gap and he will stand with you. But men, there is a leadership mandate and a role. It's hardwired into your DNA and into your spirit for you to lead. That does not mean dominate. When you read Ephesians chapter five, in fact, let me, instead of you just listening to me, let's listen to the Bible. And then that way, if you're offended, you can be offended at God. Okay, uh, it says, verse 22, wives submit to your own husbands as unto the Lord. For the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church, and his, which is his body, and he himself is its savior. Now, as the church submits to Christ, so also wives should submit in everything to their husbands. Husbands, love your wives as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for it. That's sacrificial love. That he might sanctify her, having cleansed her by the washing of the water with the word, so that he might present to himself a church in splendor without spot or wrinkle or any such thing so that they might be holy and without blemish. In the same way, husbands should love their wives as their own body. Now, when it talks about headship, or it's talking about head, we have no problem believing that Christ is the head of the church. Well, that same pattern is applied into the family that men are supposed to lead their families, not dominate them, not demand submission. If you are saying to your wife, husbands, you need to submit to me, then you are out of order because submission is not something you demand. Submission is one of the most powerful ways that a person can live. I'm submitted to God. I'm submitted to Christ. I'm, I, when I was a child, I was submitted to my parents. We all are submitted to somebody. Uh, and so then Christ is the head of the, of the church Men are the head of the families. And then it, within the marriage relationship, the two mutually submit to one another in some things. And so in our household, there are things that I submit to Jane on because she has a, a unique insight or a perspective, especially with our kids. There's things that uh, her discernment that she brings, and I, I submit to that. Now, there's a difference in church governance when we talk about the church because it's an extension of the family. There's a difference between governance and leadership. Governance is eldership. So in, in Radiant Church, we believe that eldership is a male-specific calling. 
Uh, why is that? It's because when you read 1 Timothy, it says, if any man desires to be an elder or an overseer, and then it gives the qualifications. There's no parameters for female eldership because men are, ex- are leaders of their homes, therefore the church is an extension of the home. But we do have female pastors and we do have female leaders and we have female leadership. It's because women can lead. Women can lead uh, major areas. We have female pastors. Uh, they can operate in all fivefold ministry gifts. You can have women apostles, women prophets, women evangelists, women teachers, women pastors. You can have women worship leaders. Women can teach from the platform because that's gifting, but gifting is different than governance. Governance is the extension of, of governmental oversight, whether it's in the house or whether it's within the church. And so when we look at the New Testament, I feel, I feel like, and our elders feel like that is the framework that we're called to. It gives everybody, there are some denominations, by the way, where women can't talk, women can't teach, they can't do anything. And it's because they confuse governance with gifting. Women are equally gifted and anointed as men. Women are equally called and powerful as men. We are as powerful, male and female, men and women, as we are identifying and walking within the range of what God has called us to. There are certain things that I can't do. I can't have a child, contrary to what some news outlets want you to know. Women alone can have children. Men alone can produce offspring in the way that we do. It's like you can't confuse those two. One's not better than the other. They complement. And when those two things complement, they give birth to life. And so that's how we function within church governance. Yeah.